Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the finale of the Super Late Model Regulation Series. The 10th and final round will take place here in Tennessee at the famed Nashville Fairground Speedway. I'm Mike McBlam, your commentator and driver of the Valvoline Green Machine, steeled and ready for the task ahead. There's a five-point separation between myself and points leader Eddie Crawford. It's pretty much a guarantee that whomever finishes ahead of the other will be crowned the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to settle the Super Late Model Regulation Series. Green flags in the air. Let's bring the noise at Nashville. First three laps of the race complete. Not making the uh, big moves I would like to be making here at Nashville. Got a little bit loose going into one that time. Try to get our way up into P12. We get to the inside of Ned Hill. Ned Hill outside of the top 10. He's usually not running that bad. We get to the inside of the 03. Ricky Cox up ahead. He's having a good run here at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Red Thompson running in the top 10. And as usual, the leader is the points leader, Eddie Crawford. Running away with it for the first few uh, first few laps or so, but you always we always know there's going to be that caution. That's going to come out and bunch the field back up again. Ooh, try to get to the outside of Thompson. He has none of it. He shuts that door and keeps it closed. We're fighting for the top 10. He comes up again, but we do manage to get the run to the inside. Going to crowd him a little bit up the racetrack. Clear him off turn number four. We make our way into P10. Still not good enough, though. This is supposed to be one of the hardest racetracks in the game. And through my experience in the SRX series, this track is genuinely very difficult with the AI. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of on throttle time. You'll hear I'm not out of the throttle for very long and I'm not even all the way out. We get to the inside of Jesse Wright for P9. And Jesse's been, uh, Jesse's been running pretty good here. In the past few races, I guess his cousin Jamie got uh, got on him a little bit, started roasting him, so he had to start doing better in the races. Or he just randomly had some equipment improve, or a combination of the both. A combination of both. He gets to the inside of Tommy Tommy Bailey for P8. Side set on Kevin Murphy right now. Lap traffic is going to play a factor. He's going to get stuck behind a few guys here, but yeah, this has uh, been one of the most difficult tracks in the game uh pavement tracks i should say but one of the most difficult pavement tracks just because there's a lot of on throttle time i want to say that other track where i can't remember what the name of it is uh you'll have to remind me in the comments below but you pretty much your foot you're you're, you're flat footed all the way around but this track you can sort of do that but honestly this might sound weird, but you do tend to scrub off quite a bit of speed. Man, we caught up to Robbie Collins so quick. That lap car slowed him all the way up. We get inside of the 05 for P5. Contact off turn number four. He's still going to fight on the outside. This is one of the more difficult tracks, like I said, just because of the uh, amount of on throttle time. And the AI can really rip it around here, which pr does present a good challenge, especially if you're trying to chase somebody down, but... We've also got a custom setup in here, which does tend to help things out significantly in this game. So just heads up for anyone that does, that does want to 
if you do want to try this game, if you're going to run on the top difficulty, make sure you're at least tweaking the, uh, the, uh, the, the setup to be a little bit custom. Trying to run it on default is just not going to do you any favors on a higher diff on the highest difficulty. We'll try to work our way around lap traffic here. Oh, got really loose off of four. Try to keep it off of young there. We're running P5 right now. Samantha Bell is about two seconds up, but she's currently fighting with the 25 of Tommy Richardson, but she's going to take that spot away. We're going to go to the outside of Margie Brooks unsuccessfully and very badly. Would not recommend trying to make a pass like that. <laughs> well, we should get to the her inside here. I do want to try to make some passes on the outside. I know it's very possible. I was doing it in practice. Yeah, Tommy Richardson up ahead of us, running P17. This is pretty much where he runs for the most part. But yeah, I'm a little bit surprised uh, to see Jamie, uh, Jamie, Jesse Wright running up towards the front. At least in the top 10, I should say, because he's, he's usually not that great. We are trying to make up. We're trying to make up some ground. Everything's good, but yeah, we're trying to make up some ground here. Well, Samantha Bell, but it's just it's tough. Like I said, like man, the the AI can really rip it around here. She's right up there. I can see her. But yeah, the AI can really rip it around here. Ooh, Eric Erickson. Slow in the center of the corner, but that's no surprise there. We're going to go to the inside of Cooper. All this helps us catch up to Samantha Bell. Oh, she looked for it. <laughs> she looked for it. I got so nervous. I thought there was going to be a wreck right there. She looked for it <laughs> to the inside of Billy Green. She wanted that spot bad, but Billy shut the door on her. Cost her some time, and now we're hunting her down. She's going to go to the outside. Oh, couldn't quite get there. The 133 pulls up in front of her. We get to the inside of Fisher. We take over P4. Now trying to catch up to Harry Nelson. Ryan Ramirez is about four seconds up the road. And there is really no telling how far up the road the 53 is. Actually, I do see him coming off of turn number four. Oh yeah, we caught up to Harry Nelson. He's dealing with this lapped car. He should really go around on the outside. He can do that. I don't know why he's... Oh, we're going to go three wide, split the middle. Not split the middle, but... <laughs> put the 86 in the middle. Ooh. Some big contact off turn number four. We got into Harry Nelson a little bit there, but that's because we were trying to keep it off the lapped car, which that was almost disaster. This is interesting, though. Like, I was just telling you, uh, like, in the last race, that it was hard to, like, it was pretty much near impossible to save the car once you got into the side of somebody and it, and it snapped your, snaps your car around. But I think I'm a little bit more ready for it this time. So if it does happen, especially at a track like this, where it's really easy to kind of, like, door bag with guys it's a little bit more room on the on the straightaway to save it you know like you can you can make it work and especially like I said like I'm a little bit more ready for it this time caution will come out someone just went hard into that outside wall all I saw was smoke for a second there I'm not sure who that was that's gonna bunch up the field that will eliminate Eddie Crawford's lead for the first time in a long time. We are starting on the inside lane. Here we go. Giving a shove to Andy Crawford. Green flag's back in the air. He leads us down into turn one. Oh, but the 71's fighting back on the outside. The four car trying to keep us pinned. We're side by side for third. Crawford takes over the lead once again. Ramirez goes after him. We're sitting here in third. 19 laps to go. Again, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a situation where whoever finishes 
ahead of the other is going to be crowned the champion. As long as, you know, we're up here towards the front. Oh, got to the inside of Ramirez. Dive bomb move down to the inside, side by side for second. Should clear him coming off turn number four. And we do. Actually, we cleared him as we got through the center of the corner. Now 17 to go. We're trying to catch up to Eddie Crawford, the points leader. This is the race for the win and the race for the championship right here. We're coming. We are right there. 16 to go. Trying to time our move just right. Big run off turn number two. We look to the inside. Here we go. Side by side into turn number three. Off turn four. Contact. We bang doors. Crossing the stripe side by side. Still fighting. Eddie Crawford trying to keep us pitched down. Big contact once again. Crawford will come down and shut the door. He maintains the lead. We need to reset as we scrape the wall coming off turn number four. 14 laps to go. And you would think it was five. Oh, but we're coming up on lap traffic now. This could either be really good for us or really bad for us. Crawford seems to get through lap traffic pretty quickly, but we're starting to reel him in ever so slightly again. We're right there at him. Just a couple of tests back. Oh, he slid up the racetrack. Here we come to the inside once again. Side by side. He's going to get pinned behind the lap car. We dive bomb it down there to take the lead. New leader. The number eight Valvoline Green Machine is leading laps here at the Nashville Fairgrounds with 11 laps to go in the race. Will it go green? I was waiting for a caution the entire time last week. There's uh, Montgomery, the 52. I think he was the cause of the caution, or it might have been this other green and white car up ahead. We were waiting for a caution the entire time. I think we had about a good solid 12 lap run, and I was waiting for a caution to come out. But one never did, and we pulled away and managed to pull within just five points of the points leader Eddie Crawford and if we can maintain this lead ladies and gentlemen there might be a new champion crowned here on Christmas Eve you're trying to be very very careful around this lap traffic Ooh, don't get to the wall I kind of pushed up just a little bit there but we're okay we get around Margie Brooks. Uh, Eddie Crawford did gain some time as we tried to get around Margie Brooks there. But, oh, Richardson came right up in front of us. Kind of thought he would stay down low, but I was a little bit prepared for him. Got some damage on our nose, but we should be okay. Oh. Yeah, they don't like to give you that outside lane, it seems. Five laps to go here at the Nashville Fairgrounds. We're sideways through the center of the corner. Had to chase that car a little bit. Uh, had to do what I could to try to keep it off of Eric Erickson. I felt like I was going to go around there. That allowed Eddie Crawford to pull within one second. Oh, man. Can we do it? Three laps to go. Will we be able to run this race caution-free? Uh, the last part of this race caution-free, I should say. Will it happen? We come to the stripe. There will be two laps to go. Eddie Crawford pulls within half a second. I need to stop hitting the wall. There he goes. The 86 cars into the wall. Caution comes out. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We're getting set up for a green, white, checker situation. One, two in points. One, two on the front row are going to come to the line for the final time this season. Here we go. Green flags back in the air. Oh, we spun the tires. Somehow maintain the lead here. Brian Ramirez has tried to follow us on through. Eddie Crawford up on the top lane trying to make something happen. Can he hang on? Not quite. He's going to get swallowed up by the field. We got tight coming off turn number four. White flag in the air one more time around. Can we hang on? We got to park the bus. We cannot let Brian Ramirez get underneath of us. We need this win. And we're going to come off turn four. On Christmas Eve, there's a new champion. The number eight Valvoline Green Machine is the champion of the Super Late Model Regulation Series. All right, guys. So here are the race results for the Super Late Model Regulation Series at the Nashville Fairgrounds. The final race of the season. And we've won it. We've won it. It was probably the, the most difficult win we've ever had, but we won it. Right over Brian Ramirez, Chase Jones in third, and previous points leader. And I'm saying previous for a reason. The previous points leader, Eddie Crawford, finishes fourth after leading most of this race and contending for the win at the end. Untimely caution. He got stuck on the outside lane. Didn't work out well for the 53. Harry Nelson rounds out the top five, followed by Robbie Collins, Kevin Murphy, Samantha Bell, Tommy Bailey, and Jesse Wright with a top 10. Jesse Wright doesn't usually run up in the top 10, so I don't know. Maybe he's uh, maybe he's starting to turn the season around now that it's over. But uh, here is the rest of the field. 10 cars finish on the lead lap. Looks like 11 through 13th, one lap down. 14th through 16th, two laps down, three laps down will be the rest of the field, except for Leon Cooper and William Wilson, who finished four and five laps down, respectively. Well, it took all season to do it, but we finally got there. I think we might have led one, uh, we might have led at one point in time. We might have led at one point in time and uh, pretty much immediately gave it up in the next race. But four wins on the season, and that was enough to secure the Super Late Model Series Championship. Followed very closely by Eddie Crawford. A whole eight points is the separation. So that, that again, that, that, uh, that restart, that caution played a pivotal role. Even though we had pulled away quite a bit... He was still running second. He was still running second the entire time. So uh, I just feel like if the caution hadn't come out, this would have been down to a tiebreaker. And I'm interested to know what the tiebreaker, I think pretty sure it was number of wins, but I'm interested to know what the tiebreaker was going to be. Brian Ramirez finishes the season in third. Fourth, Harry Nelson rounding out the top five is Samantha Bell. The only thing that's changed hands was myself and Eddie Crawford. We have Kevin Murphy, Robbie Collins, Ned Hill, and Tommy Bailey. Chase Jones around out the top ten. Chase Jones, by the way, has had a really good end of the end of the season. He's really he's really turned it on. So, um, if we were doing another season, be interested to see what where he actually finishes and uh, what he could do next next time around. That's if we were doing another season, but. I don't think that we will be, and here's the rest of the field. Um, looks like Zach Edwards was the last car to participate in the in the Super Late Model Series. Everyone else, a lot of these guys did not participate. Well, they wind up with zero points. And Jesse, Jesse Agard is the last car, 61st in points. But the story of the day is obviously the number eight Valvoline Green Machine in victory lane and hoisting the championship trophy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up. That's going to wrap it up. It's been 10 races, 10 hard fought, hardcore races. Started at the back and managed to just kind of find our groove towards the end there. Um, I think like the the breakout race had to be Slinger. 
once we hit Slinger, we seem to have just been like, you know, we we were kind of on it then. We were kind of on it since then, and you know, winning two of the last three races, coming so close in a couple of times. You know, just uh, we just we just we struggled for a little bit and towards the beginning of the season we kind of struggled for a little bit had some good finishes top fives nonetheless but you know when you're running up uh with those front front runners like eddie crawford samantha bell um brian ramirez those guys they run up front all season long so like if you finish outside of the top 10 one week that's a big you know mountain you have to climb to get back in and luckily we were able to do it I'm not going to lie, Nashville Fairgrounds was one of the track the track that I was most worried about, um, which is why I wanted a bit more of a cushion going in. But um or at least to have a closer um a closer margin than 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 what it was, but um Nashville Fairgrounds is a is a tough track, especially seeing what the qualifying time was and realizing that I was like probably a good six tenths off of the the qualifying uh the pole i was like oh boy this is gonna be a thing <laughs> this is gonna be a thing and knowing how the tires wear at that at that particular racetrack and the the overall speed of the ai because it, it took a long time to get up there and i don't think we would have gotten up there if a caution hadn't come out if a caution hadn't come out i don't think we're we're uh we're talking about winning this race um i think eddie crawford's talking about winning the race but we it like the caution fell our way definitely did not fall the 53's way and we wind up with the championship uh, if i could do burnouts in this game i definitely would have but it was heck of a season um i'm not sure if this will ever come back i'm being honest with you i'm not sure if it'll ever come back i wish this was one of those games that they you know they they eventually built upon i know that monster games is more focused on their dirt series um and it was nice to have a pavement series that wasn't nascar you know a, like pavement oval series that wasn't nascar and they really they really brought it with this one um i just I just wish they had built on it a little bit more so that, you know, you have more tracks to go to and, you know, more cars, more venues, you know, more more playability, I guess I would say, or whatever. But um and and this would be a, a good a good um game to play if the online wasn't as atrocious as it as it is. It's really, really bad. Um probably the glitchiest I've ever seen, so um, and th this is including like seeing some of how, the, how some of the old NASCAR lobbies used to look. This has probably been the worst I've seen uh, a lobby go. But um, it's unfortunate. But again, I've had a lot of fun with this game. This, this game is, is, is pretty decent. It's pretty decent, all, all things considered. You know, like there, there's still some physics issues, obviously. But um, it's just... It's one of those things like it's such like the handling is such a step above what what heat was. And I just wish that it could have like kind of continued that trend. And I was kind of hoping when they came out with the new, you know, World of Outlaws game that they would release another pavement uh, pavement oval game. But they seem to be more focused on the dirt and, you know, no, no shame there, you know, like no, no hatred there. I mean, just. Do what you do do what works right this is what people want then you gotta give them what they ask for so um anyway guys that is all i got that is the finale of the super late model regulation series if you enjoy this content be sure to subscribe click the notification bell there's always more racing content that's going to be on this channel so be sure to subscribe click the notification bell so you don't miss an upload leave a like on the video Support the series, even though it's the last one of the series. Support the series. Comment down below, hashtag champion. You know what it is. And uh, I'm going to go rest. I did four races in a row, back to back. So I'm a little tired. That's why, you know, the, the voice isn't as, you know, I, I don't seem as excited. That's because I'm tired. I'm tired. They're like they're, Racing takes a lot out of you, especially on a racing wheel and when you have to focus up so much. So, But uh, it was worth it. It's over. I had fun. Hopefully you guys had fun. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, 
Take care of yourselves. We'll see you in the next one.